And uh, today we have a talk of uh, Nikolai Vovchansky. Uh, uh, and the title of the talk is Operator Splitting Methods for Stochastic Flows, Dual Non Geometric Flows, and Error Expansions. Please. Nikolai, can you hear me? Oops. Oh, sorry, sorry, I was muted. I'm sorry. Okay, you can start. So this is a continuation of my last but one talk where I talked about the leak trotter or cathode trotter splitting for Harris flows. Uh, so let me recall briefly what we are dealing with. So we have uh, a collection of particles that start from all points of R. So we in one dimensional setting. Uh, they, they form a stochastic flow, which is stationary, which is which has independent increments, which form a flow. And uh, every particle uh, moves uh, like a solution to SD with drift A, where A is some function, and uh, the infinitesimal covariance function for a pair of uh, particles is given in terms of this phi. So phi and A de define the flow. Uh, the first definition here uh, uh, says that phi is good enough. This is the original condition that Harris considered that guarantees that the flow is not homeomorphic in the sense that particles immediately merge. Uh, the second definition uh, I added to get a possibility to introduce drift and to guarantee that at some uh, if some conditions are met, we have coalescence. So this just allows us to speak about the distance between two particles in terms of a third and another function row. And we require linear growth. And no, excuse me, yes. uh, you, you said that uh, in the second definition, uh, you uh, put some conditions on the uh, funds on the drift A in order to for particles to have possibility to coalesce. So it can uh, it can change possibility to coalesce uh, comparatively to the same flow without drift with the same function uh, phi. Well, first moment, if you have two particles in original flow, they will meet eventually. Mm -hmm. If you add drift, even good drift, they mm -hmm. may never meet. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, still, uh, they merge. Uh, uh, stop, stop, stop. Okay, uh, so I don't understand. Uh, so, uh, can you just uh, give me an example uh, of two particles which uh, never meet with a good drift? Uh, Not never, but with positive prob probability they do not meet. I, uh, I will give you an example later, I think. So, do you mean that they, the distance goes to infinity? Because uh, yes, essentially, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, because uh, it, is, it looks like uh, if we have, uh, some, for example, uh, some uh, bounded drift, uh, why it can happen? Yeah, because you can have just linear drift. Uh, linear, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so you, 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 you have to part. Because of, because of drift, uh, distance may grow to infinity. So if they are close, the, the probability of coalescence will go to zero. Uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, let two me, one, two uh, one. Sorry. Uh, let me ask you. Uh, you mean that uh, drift uh, A can be unbounded, yeah, or what? Mm, there is no assumption that A is bounded. Ah, I, uh, so uh, you you uh, you uh, you maybe you uh, you uh, kept in mind that uh, there are some ugly drift uh, which can uh, cause the particle. Uh, uh, coalescing before uh, without drift uh, can coalesce, yeah, uh, can, uh, cannot coalesce. Uh, the situation is, is for let me find so if you consider this mm -hmm. estimate for the drift, so mm -hmm. this is a diffusion, this is generator that uh bounds from above, 
gives an estimate from above. Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, scale, this speed measure, mm -hmm. and actually, uh, if we have uh, just uh, a linear case, mm -hmm. then actually this, which is a, uh, the infinity becomes an accessible point. Mm -hmm. So with probability p0, this is actually equals to this uh, ratio to particles, mm -hmm. we'll move to infinity. Oh, okay, uh, but before they coalesce, yeah? Without... If they meet, they merge. If they no, do no, not, no, no. They... Uh, The question was uh, with the same function phi. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have such a trivial example, that I think. So we have two independent Brownian motion, and uh, we just add uh, the lead. Drift, yes, yes, yes. Obviously, the, the Orstein, this is the process with positive drift. It goes mm -hmm. to infinity with probability one, even. Mm -hmm. So okay. there is a probability they never meet. Yes. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. You are welcome. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So this rod just gives us a possibility to control the distance. Mm -hmm. uh, now, then we already discussed these two theorems. So this first is immediate because this is just a Martin Gale, the theory of Martin Gale problems that you can introduce any measurable A. The linear growth just makes it well posed. Uh, then this Harris flow exists. But if phi, so 1 minus phi x is something x to the power alpha, and this uh, plus y minus a of y is rho of uh, x, and rho of x behaves like x to the power beta when x goes to 0. And if this uh, condition is satisfied, then we have the same behavior as the original flow. Mm -hmm. So there is only a countable number of particles at every finite, and on every contact. Mm -hmm. uh, now, so what is splitting? Uh, here I will consider, unless stated as otherwise, only Lipschitz uh, continuous A, only Lipschitz continuous drifts. Uh, so we have uh, a partition of the interval 0, t, t n k, t n k plus 1. And by a, this is i capital n k, this is just the k plus 1's uh, uh, element of this partition. And delta n is the size of the partition. Then we compose to a same group, the same group. Is this just the same group, the flow of the origin, the ordinary differential equation? Mm -hmm. And this is the Harris flow with zero drift. So we ran ODE and move, wait, uh, sorry, we ran uh, within the flow and then ran an ODE. Here we do the opposite. And uh, borrowing this notation, I am very fond of this particular notation. Uh, so every t now belongs to some t n k, t n k plus one, some interval. So this is d n of t, and this this is d star of n of t. And then there is this a compact representation of this splitting scheme. These are the corresponding uh, Wiener processes that are composed of parts of trajectories from the Harris flows, from the Harris flow. Uh, one characteristic feature of this representation is that you cannot use the Ito formula, neither to, neither, you cannot apply the Ito formula neither to U nor to Y. And last time we discussed this theorem, the proof of this theorem. So finite dimensional motions in this scheme are convergent to the finite dimensional motion of the Harris flow with drift A in the square hole spaces. So I want to add one remark, uh, whether, we, whether we can have non-Lipschitz drifts. Uh, 
so actually we can, uh, for example, in this simple situation. So we take any function that satisfies this uh, one-sided Lipschitz condition. This is a standard condition from the theory of Udinius even, because it guarantees this, this the corresponding differential equation uh, is well posed in the sense that in our case, it translates to the fact that the Harris flow exists and has finite moments. And then instead, because now OD for A is bad, is ill posed, because A is no longer Lipschitz, but maybe may discontinuous, we just add uh, a regularizing uh, Wiener process that is independent from the initial scheme. Then we have unique strong solution on every. Uh, step of our scheme, and we can just use this as it is instead of the original ODEs to define a splitting scheme. Uh, technically, everything works. In, uh, but uh, let me ask you about yes. this epsilon n. Maybe uh, it can be, it must be related to the uh, size of partition and uh, uh, how it is related to this. Well, I always took it just much smaller than the size of partition. So, uh, for example, uh, if partition is one over n, over n, one over n squared should work. Okay, uh, so it, it must be uh, it must go to zero uh, with with the speed which is greater than speed uh, of partition. Yeah, uh, I think that it doesn't even matter because essentially what we will be having, we will be having multiple problems where we will be having additional terms. Yes. But if epsilon n, epsilon n goes to zero, they will disappear. This, we will be adding one additional term here. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I, I agree that uh, it is uh, well defined and so on, but uh, actually, uh, uh, when you finish splitting, uh, you have to say it goes to some uh, limit, and uh, you think that it is enough to have epsilon uh, just going to zero. Yes, because I did that uh, via the theory of Martin Gate problems. So you have the operator. We we'll, we will be having one additional. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. part, but this goes to zero, the corresponding integral. Okay, strange. Uh, uh, well, uh, and I, I don't understand. U is independent of Y? No. Uh, no, they are dependent. Oh, so, they have equation. so U depends only on U? No, U depends on Y through this part. Ah. Because this is a traject, this is parts from the flow. So if we have a representation, sometimes Harris flow can be represented it represented as a uh, stochastic differential equation. So okay. then this stochastic differential equation will go right here. And it will depend here on UN. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And here will be u n, but here will be coefficient from uh, y n. <laughs> here y n and u n n. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, so besides what we are we are talking right now, there is one additional step in the proof that needs to be checked, and uh, this is this calculation. So if we have a one t from x two minus y n t of x one, where x two is greater than x one, uh, we want to use some form of the Fortuny lemma and the gronold bellman lemma here to estimate. So uh, we know that our particles at time t and l were at distance epsilon, and we want to know that after all jumps and progressing, they are still within a controllable distance. And when A is Lipschitz, this is just the gronow bellman lemma, but when we have one-dimensional Lipschitz condition, it's still the same idea. 
but we need to guarantee uh, that this is in our new scheme, this expression is always positive, uh, non-negative. And you can have a number of reasons for that. Uh, I, I know three references, but for instance, you can use this short home motion Pilipenko reference for that. And then we obtain uh, the same result. But th that was just a remark because the main thing I want uh, to talk about is about this images of any measure that has uh, that allows integrating such functions and uh, the fact that these measures are weakly converted in the weak star topology so a direct corollary would be that we consider images of the, the back measure on a compact they will be also Convergent is another in another weak star topology. So, 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 so idea is roughly speaking taken from this paper in the sense that because we're speaking about weak convergences, we are speaking about some integrals of this form where xi may be yn or the original flow x. And the idea is to discretize such integrals. Uh, but, uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, yes. you say that you has a, a, a arbitrary measure, but you wrote uh, the integral dx. Uh, next page, please. And then, uh, oh, here is, uh, here is integral. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It should be new zero x. Thank mm -hmm. okay. you. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean, discretization? Discretization means that I want instead of this integral, mm -hmm. f, f, x, x, I want to consider the sum mm -hmm. came from one, say, to n, and here f, uh, xi t. Uh, so suppose I also have some s, and I consider uh, this in R interval, mm -hmm. and here I take minus s plus. S K over N. Mm -hmm. New zero of the corresponding uh, part. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I need two things. Uh, sorry? No, no problem. Okay, okay. So I need, need two things to get rid of tails because I want a discretization of finite interval. And I want to guarantee uh, that the discretization, when it happens, it uh, the error goes to zero when n goes to infinity. So this guarantees that this error goes to infinity for the original, uh, for uh, these uh, approximate flows. And this is the lemma that guarantees that the same happens uh, for the original flow. This is not the optimal. Estimate so it looks ugly, but it, it works because we will have here epsilon, but this epsilon will go here in where we need it. Uh, I will prove this lemma after finishing the proof of the theorem. So, uh, what essentially we need to do is to get rid of tails. And for that, I would introduce such a D. So A of X now is less than C A one plus X if X is positive. And I know the solution to this equation. Now I will introduce this uh, increments of the corresponding uh, Brownian motion for fixed X. And I will introduce this process. So this process just does the following. On time interval uh, 0, t, and 1, uh, it solves ODE with uh, a very bad drift. So it moves uh, very low. Then it runs our uh, flow. Then it gains move uh, 
with the highest speed that is possible to the original ODE. And then the original ODE UN would be somewhere here. So this is just uh, what happens when you do this uh, iterative pushing downwards. And if everything is positive, we can guarantee that our approximate process is greater than or equal to this eta. But from here, it follows that we can, instead of tails for the original flow, for this flow, we can estimate tails for this flow, for this process. And this process, again, can be easily simplified as I said that this is a well-controllable thing, this is just constant, this x, and we can control x. And this is just a centered Gaussian process with a known uh, covariance function. Uh, so now I want, I suspect there is another proof. I went for the proof that is guaranteed to work, which is the combination of the characterization and quality and entropy bounds. So in, I estimate tails of this uh, Gaussian, of this process in the terms of X, S, and the supremum. And we essentially need to get rid of tails that this happens uniformly in M. So we can control this S. Uh, this is a standard entropy bound. This is a Dudley integral and M and E is the entropy uh, or the entropy number. It depends on the author. And we have this intrinsic metric on just interval zero T. And uh, the most important part here is just to write a proper estimate. Uh, it's asymmetrical in the sense that S1 and S2, S1 lives on E n k1, S2 here lives on E n k2, but the size of the jump between S1 and S2 is defined actually uh, by the size of this second uh, interval. Uh, and now we will be estimating entropy. If the value at which entropy is calculated is large enough, we just take uniform bounds and everything works perfectly. We have what we need, the second power here. Uh, if epsilon is smaller, we need to do some stuff. So first of all, uh, I will call an interval large if it satisfies this condition. And small if uh, it goes other direction. So I'm allowing non-uniform partitions. And the epsilon net that we are after is the combination of the ordinary uniform net epsilon square divided over C in the ordinary Euclidean metric and on each large interval, we build the net of the same size, also with respect to the Euclidean metric, and we always include the left uh, end of the interval. So uh, let me ask you, uh, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, uh, this uh, consideration is necessary to estimate the entropy? Or what? Yes, yes, yes. I want um, to prove. Can you just go back uh, to the uh, this entropy estimation for the tail? So this... uh, you, you use this entropy estimation for Y, yes? Yes. Uh, why is the Hauschian process, as I said? Why uh, isn't? No. Uh, uh, oh, 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 excuse well, me. Well, why? Uh, for eta, uh, sorry. Eta, for eta. It, it is Gaussian. Eta is Gaussian. Uh, but it is one dimensional, I think, yes? Yes. Uh, and we know it's uh, coherence, yeah? Yes. Uh, do you need uh, such a, a very uh, strong uh, and very precise estimation? Uh, because uh, actually, uh, uh, there is a uh, much more simpler estimation that the soup uh, has a tail like a Gaussian va uh, variable with the maximum of the variance. I don't know this form. I mean, this is a discontinuous Gaussian process. 
No, it does not matter. It does not matter. Uh, uh, you can start with uh, some uh, even count upset. Uh, take this because uh, I think that uh, you don't need uh, such a very precise. Okay, it, it works, but uh, yeah. uh, maybe it can be done much more simply. Okay, uh, uh, let's... possibly maybe you can decompose actually this proof in what you because maybe you can because this is being based on this chaining argument by Ledu. Ledu calls it or Telegram calls it. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I understand, but uh, it looks like in one dimensional case when the process is one dimension, we don't need such heavy uh, machinery. Possibly, I just don't know such a reason. Uh, let's check. Uh, I think that good reference is uh, Adler and Taylor. Uh, this uh, well-known uh, monograph of uh, yeah, 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 geometry. Yes, I actually citing them here. And uh, uh, another one is uh, this book of uh, Marcus and Rosen. Uh, how she, Markov process, Hausian process, yeah, and different yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, uh, in Hausian part, they have a lot of such estimation. Yeah? Probably there is a simple estimate. Yeah, okay, is, okay. Is... Just, just just have a look. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I will look, but I already submitted a corrected version of the paper. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so but I will look. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is our epsilon f. So on large intervals, we have this estimate. So we have uniform part of our net, and we have some of the large intervals. But since they are large, uh, now C changes its value from line to line. You, you, you need to do some meddling with it to guarantee the, the result estimate is just epsilon in the end. So, but it's just C everywhere. I do not care about its precise value. Uh, since this happens, here is the problem. We have this plus one. And if I were to sum over all intervals, if I assume that partition is non-uniform, there is no way I can control it. But now, since this interval is large, I can just replace this one with the same expression. And that gives me what is needed. Uh, so for large intervals, it's easy to check. Let's assume that we have a small interval. Uh, there is actually, if we have a small interval, it should live in some cluster. Possibly this cluster consists only of one such interval. Of, uh, but this is a cluster composed of small intervals. And there is a large interval to the left or to the right and to the right. Or possibly there is just zero here, for instance. So this is small intervals and at least at one side of this cluster should be a large interval. If the length of this cluster is large enough, then we can just took a point from the uniform part of our epsilon net, and this is guarantee that we have this estimate because this is controllable. If uh, this cluster is short, then if it has a large cluster, to the left, then actually we can took took net from there. So we uh, epsilon. This is the size of the cluster, and this is uh, this. What happens when we consider epsilon net for the large cluster? Because i n m one minus one. This is exactly t n t n m one. So we are approaching this left part. And this is guarantees again the estimate. If there is no large cluster to the right, then this means that all our uh, cluster just ends here. But we said uh, that the size of this cluster is small. So we can just add zero here and be happy. And that. Then we have our uniform estimate, and for the limit process, we just estimate with the Steinberg back and have the same. So this actually finishes the proof of this theorem. Uh, we need to prove our additional lemma. 
Uh, for that, I will need another lemma. So I will firstly prove this another auxiliary lemma, and then we will return to our main lemma. So let theta be the moment two particles in the flow meet, and then this holds. So we have here precisely a to the power of one, two minus alpha. And alpha is my minus phi of x greater than this c modulus of modulus x to the power of. Uh, so uh, instead of looking at the difference, consider the diffusion that is greater than this difference. So this is a diffusion, this is our row, it has standard uh, prop stuff. Uh, Boundary is always accessible because alpha, beta, alpha from phi and beta from A and rho connected. And then instead of considering our theta, we can consider just this new diffusion. And then we need to prove this for the diffusion. Here I am going to repeat. Uh, something that I already told at the previous seminar, but I will need this to repeat to show why this holds. And also last time I made, it's not, I, I, I was not very precise at one point. Uh, so first of all, we get rid of drift. Uh, then we introduce the time change. So we get this generator. And then we, we again do something with the space to uh, get to the squared Bessel process. So original idea of Harris book was these two steps, and everything works. Here we just added one layer, so we need to control something. Uh, the only problem here is that this is our transformed Xi, but it lives on this interval. And this actually can be finite. While uh, the squared Bessel process lives on R plus, the dimension delta is uh, how it's defined. Then we almost have what we needed. And if uh, the scale function at infinity is infinity, we immediately get our estimate, almost immediately. But if it finite, our uh, diffusion transform original diffusion can actually hit this right side of the interval before it hits zero, which just means that the original diffusion never hits zero. So we should uh, also include this additional term. Uh, but this term just can be expressed in terms of the scale function of the squared Bessel process. And it's known and it, everything comes together in a very nice way. We obtain exactly the estimate we want in the sense that this uh, 1 over x to the power 1, 2 minus alpha. This is exactly what we get. Uh, the rest of the proof is actually exactly, almost exactly as, as in Harris, we just control the scale function. But we already talked about that at another section. So we have this control over this time change. So we, we, we can finish. I will not spend much time about that. So now we have everything to prove our main lemma that the distance uh, between particles in the flow uh, satisfies this estimate. Uh, for that, I will just denote this, the modulus, the supreme of modulus of such a distance is this VT and theta is again the moment they meet. Uh, then we have uh, this representation where mt is a square integrable continuous martingale with this property. This is because my by a is less than one, and you will have two additionally. I mean, you can see it's the difference of two correlated Brown and Morton that are correlated exactly as in the Harris law. Uh, then we use the holder. Uh, inequality to get this expression. So here where we use what we just proved, here again is just a Wiener process and this is a well-known thing that can be estimated in terms of A. 
And this is again can be estimated times. This is just controllable in the sense that it's bounded. So we have two terms and we just uh, optimize in the sense that we make both powers equal because it's the only thing we can do. And this gives us the gamma we want. This finishes the proofs of this result for push forward measures. Uh, Another point I want to talk about dual flows. So since the flows are coalescing, you cannot define an inverse flow in the sense of Kunita. Uh, so this is construct the construction how you define a dual flow. Uh, so we just find a point and look at all uh, trajectories within the original flow that hit higher than this x and took in film infinum of all such trajectories. And then this thick line is our uh, dual flow. Markin actually proves that this nice duality holds also for Harris flows. Uh, you can do this by approximating the flow with smooth flows. For smooth flows, it's well known that the dual flow is just a inverse flow, but you, you need to prove this, but it's easy. And you know that uh, the inverse flow with the flow of the flow with drift A is the flow with the same covariance structure, but with the drift minus A, if the covariance function is symmetrical, because if it's not symmetrical, we do another term appears. But... Yeah. So um, can you just go back to the to this formula? Uh, so we have such a <clears throat> family, I think, uh, here, x t capital minus t t capital minus s of y. Uh, so this is a, a part of a mapping uh, from uh, time, uh, which is uh, where both time uh, horizons are not equal to zero, yes? Maybe I didn't. I do not really understand. You mean that we I use mean that uh, you use uh, uh, x uh, with uh, two time parameters? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, so let me ask you uh, how do because before, uh, as far as I understood, we considered uh, the case uh, when uh, we start from zero and uh, uh, we just uh, use splitting method to construct x no. zero t or what? No. No, uh, actually, we we will, we were already using hardest flows, so we started with different here. Uh, so uh, so here we use uh, we use this uh, with zero. Okay, okay. So uh, it has used. Uh, yes, yes, I remember this. E K T. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, this is crucial. It wouldn't work even. Mm -hmm. Would it make sense otherwise? Mm -hmm. This is the same as we did for Brown and that. Yes, I understand. Okay, Let, let's go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you consider this uh, the same Harris law uh, without okay, mm -hmm. okay. So, so let, let's move forward. So I now want to use the splitting. I essentially want I want to prove the following. So if sorry, I want uh, a splitting that now starts not at zero but at any fixed time points. Mm -hmm. So if x coincides with some t and k, we just forget from what happens to the left. If s is on some t and k and k plus one, we just use ODE on this time interval, on this interval, and we use Harris flow as a start of S. So here, here, T and k of S, this is exactly this. Uh, so now we can construct them, use the same splitting procedure to construct some un and yn. 
but now they are defined only after s. So I will just, uh, so this is s, this is our un, this is its smooth, more or less, uh, with some jumps. This is un. I just consider an extension of this un by adding a straight line to the left. So I do not care whether my process are defined, they all live on zero of t. So this is again form a good flow. They are consistent for different n uh, and for different s of t. And this actually defines a flow, this dual flow. Uh, now I want uh, to consider uh, an essentially a dense subset of zero. This is not zero t, this is zero t. Uh, please uh, recall um, assumption on function a. A? Yes, a. Uh, a is here. A is measurable. And uh, the difference is bounded with some row. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. So instead of the original flow, the whole flow, I just consider this selection, a collection of trajectories that start with time with, at these times from these points. Since th they are, these SN, XN are dense, this essentially still captures the whole flow, the, its whole behavior. And these are our discretized or skeletonized uh, dual flows. Uh, or, so, sorry, splitted flows, and this is our original flow. Then I will consider the space, uh, the square hot space is a product topology. This product of interval, time intervals, and like PK is a projector of fast K coordinates. Then, uh, because I have this finite dimensional motions, I can construct a random element in this space by uh, using this splitted and this original flow to define a random element that now corresponds to the original flow in the space. And this is the random, these are random elements that correspond to splitted flows in the space. At the same time, I can apply this uh, dual transformation to this collection of uh, trajectories. And by using that, and I still can define random elements, they, are, they correspond to dual transformations of this original flow and these uh, split flows. And The main theorem is actually that if you have coalescing flow, that is important. Then these transformations are actually convergent to, in particular, uh, convergent finite dimensional motion. So the main idea is here is that possibly it might be useful if you want to calculate some probabilities in the way it's done for the Brownian web. Sometimes it's easier to calculate probability for the Brownian web in terms of the dual Brown inverse that runs backward in time. And essentially the idea of the proof is that finite dimensional are convergent, so the whole random elements are convergent. And the idea is again from the same paper, uh, I define a discretized version of the, those mapping that was used to define the dual flow. So this is just a fancy way. Unfortunately, I've tried a number of times. I, I didn't come with a good notation for this. This is atrocious, I know, but it's the best I can do. So this is just a discretized version. Then one can check that uh, we have, sorry, disappeared. This mapping gives you the dual flow and this mapping when applied to the this, this uh, 
discretized version of the flow gives you the discretized version of the dual flow. And to prove this, we need to introduce two subsets of our D. And the first subset is just a set of uh, trajectories that never cross each other, but they meet, may merge, and start at the points we start originally. And uh, the second uh, is a subset of this set of good, necessarily good trajectories that satisfy two properties. This is some uniform properties that if you consider the whole interval and all points and try to define how they how quickly they move from their starting points of a small time interval tau, then uniformly you cannot get very far. And this is true for the flow. And this is just a fancy way of writing the following property. If this element from d is zero t infinity is such that y is a point, then we cannot have a situation where an infinite number of trajectories hit closer and closer to y. So if y is not hit by any trajectory, that means there is a distance between the closest trajectory and y. And then essentially these two lemmas were proven that this dual mapping, discretized dual mapping is continuous in a proper sense. It's discontinuous on, the, on this sort of space, but it's continuous when our pre-limit flows are just good enough and our limit flow satisfies these two additional assumptions. And then we can check that this is exactly the situation we are in. And that's actually finishes this part. Uh, and the last part that I wanted to talk a bit is about error expansions. So what I mean by saying an error expansion. So let's recall very quickly what is the Euler Maruyama and the Milstein scheme schemes are. So this is Euler Maruyama scheme for the SD dx i t equal a psi of t dt plus sigma psi of t dwt. You can define a continuous version, then it satisfies this uh, differential equation. It's actually wrong. But it satisfies it. Because the differential equation, you can use the formula. The Milstein schema is the second order scheme, so this is actually the Levy measure, the, the Levy area. And standard results that in mean square of Elvin Maruyama is first order accurate and Milstein is second order accurate. However, there is two very interesting results. The first one, one by Tolai to borrow the second is Boli and Tolai. Uh, I will be speaking about the first one. It says the following that if all our function is actually good enough and F also should have a property for any alpha, uh, the derivative f x is less than some constant one plus x to some m. So all derivatives of f grow uh, polynomially. Uh, and a sigma should be smooth with bounded derivatives. Then this decomposition of the weaker where error holds. And it has the same first order for both schemes, but phi is different. And uh, for El Moriyama, it has this form. Uh, and actually, I want to say that uh, under the same ex condition on A, sigma and f, if we consider splitting of a diffeomorphic flow, not the Harris flow, but a diffeomorphic flow, so the, the flow of solution to the ordinary stochastic differential equation, the same decomposition holds, but we lose one half here, and our function is different. Uh, there is a small remark, actually, that yn is a good approximation for the original uh, process x. But un 
aren't in the sense that they add this additional logarithm. So you initially shouldn't ex be expecting here one over n squared, I think. And I want to say just a few words how this result is proven, because essentially we'll be following the very same scheme of Talai and Tabarro, uh, but we need just to calculate a few things slightly differently. And I unfortunately we need another egg journal, I forgot. It's, it's, it's already used. Make it bigger. I have no clue how to do this. I'm, I'm sorry. Just just one second. Oh, here. Okay. I'm sorry. So the original idea, the first step of the pi to borrow is actually the same. You have x, x, t, x, and s, f, y, n. Uh, t, x. And you can actually write this as follows. X, 0, y, n, t, x minus u zero x where d over dt u equals minus I will consider only fundamental one dimensional case uh, one half sigma squared d dx squared plus a d over dx u on zero t and u t x is f of x. So this is the original step. And then you can write it actually as a sum one to n delta n k, where every delta n k has a form. I will just write it for my plus one y and t n k plus one minus t n k y n t n k. So you work with these summons and estimate them separately and gather together to get the integral. Uh, here is a small difference. In the to light to borrow case, you proceed by essentially using the into formula and decomposing everything up to the needed order. But here, unfortunately, uh, we need to introduce a correction. So I will write just TK. I will drop this N. And instead of this expression, I will write just TK. So N is fixed for the moment. Then this TK plus 1 is actually just u t k. So this cancels. And here stands y n, everything is good. DWS, this disappears, plus one half and second derivative. x squared U S Y S sigma squared Y S uh, D S. But now uh, the original idea was then this dt can be replaced by the second derivative in space. So this is the second order di spatial differential uh, operator. Now we can do that. And uh, instead we get that 
Cosmetic expectation of error is y of s dx s Cos dx u t t y t t u s d s plus one half d squared x x u t k y t k alpha squared k where alpha k is integral over u k u s d s we get an ugly expression because we do not have the eta formula. And why we don't have it? Because uh, now y t k plus one, it function cannot be written as Decay because there is a jump that is governed by u tk plus one minus u tk. So this will add this additional integral into this expression. And I want just to show one uh, proposition that says that we don't really need this. So the first, this probability one. Y s minus y t k square d s over f t k, where t k is the uh, filtration of the flow. It's one over two n squared sigma squared equal to t k plus something smaller, really small. And second, why we need this? Because we will be getting expression of this type minus a dx u, the same variable expression, but calculated y s ds. And this is actually minus one half second derivative is time at tk y tk. And here exactly the correction. It's not correction, it's the weight. So this is gives sigma squared. one over n squared. And this also shows that at some point we will be estimating something like ys my y tk over ds. But this is only gives one half of one over n. So this is why we lose one over n, uh, one half in the strengths, in the order of accuracy of this week scheme. I will not go into other details because it's just, it's not even that lengthy, just calculation. I have to, to say that I think one can establish a stronger result. I do not have a time, and actually I wasn't preparing it. I haven't prepared it for today, but actually, Talai to Bali, Talai in their second paper established a stronger result that under some Usoka struck condition on the coefficients of the equation, that guarantee that the density of the corresponding uh, stochastic differential equation exists and admits good Gaussian estimates, and the same good Gaussian estimates uh, hold for the derivatives of this density. The same uh, representation of the light to borrow 
holds. But now F can be just measurable. I can't write. So the same expression. Uh, integral where f is now is just measurable is bounded measurable measurable so instead of differentiating a they use the Valerian calculus and they found a way to do it in a way that only the density of the mm -hmm. limit but process maybe, is used. Uh, maybe here you need uh, that time is separated from zero yeah yes time is fixed t Yes, yes, uh, and uh, estimation will depend on t, I think, in this, uh, under oh. this approach. Under this approach. Here will, will be something like that, x of x, yes. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this Kusoka stripe is given, so if you have uh, a of psi of t, dt plus, uh, in general, if you have sigma, mm -hmm. k psi of t, D, uh, D, 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 W, K of T, K. Uh, those are messing it up. So then sigma K uh, defines the corresponding uh, Lie bracket, right? Uh, Lie derivative. Uh, so if it's, it's in, in finite dimensional case, in one dimensional case, it's just the ordinary. The, the, the derivative mm -hmm. and yes, then you... vector fields and uh, with yes. all this stuff with uh, uh, <clears throat> this exponential yeah yeah so this is something like this so you need the corresponding iterated commutator of this field yeah this should be uh graded for some l and this is l mm -hmm. and nice. i think if you that I can actually prove the same result for the splitting if you just assume this condition. Following their, their scheme, like line by line, almost line by line. But we will see in the future, possibly. That's all. Thank you for your attention. OK. Uh, thank you very much uh, for interesting talk. And maybe somebody have questions or comments, please. I have several questions. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, you uh, produced an is, uh, estimation for the uh, expectation of the supremum of the difference between two uh, trajectories in highest flow with drift. Uh, you um, mean this uh, Lima? Uh, yes, uh, yes, maybe this one, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you even take this epsilon. Why I am... Uh, concentrated on this uh, lemma uh, because uh, when I uh, introduced the notion of entropy for stochastic flows, uh, it seems that it is a universal characteristic of stochastic flows, uh, uh, which uh, did not pay, which does not pay attention uh, whether coalescence occurs as a flow or not. Uh, we just uh, expect that in a one-dimensional case, uh, the entropy will will be finite for all uh, stochastic flows, uh, Brownian stochastic flow. Uh, but uh, he, uh, so I think that uh, with your technique, uh, you already can uh, look uh, just have a look for entropy for Harris stoch uh, stochastic and uh, quadratic entropy for Harris stochastic flows, uh, because uh, you see this estimation which you produce actually is not enough uh, to say something about finiteness of entropy, but maybe it can be uh, done in more precise way. And then it can be a very interesting conclusion, which uh, will uh, like uh, support my hypothesis that for any uh, stochastic, uh, one-dimensional stochastic flow, we have a finite and a quadratic entropy. That's an interesting no, okay. It's a very interesting thing. 
but I need to think a bit. Uh, no, I, of course, uh, it, uh, and it will be uh, really interesting. Uh, this, this is, is interesting. A one comment. Uh, second comment. Uh, uh, when you get this estimation in uh, Talai, uh, last um, uh, last story about Talai overall estimation, you get the uh, difference between uh, two. Uh, oh yes, exactly. Uh, so then. Uh, it looks like uh, you can use it uh, just get the uh, estimation for Wasserstein distance in the space of uh, measures for distribution of random measures, which are uh, carried by our uh, by Harris flow and uh, by its approximations. Yes, but it's not for Harris flow. This re this requires good, very good properties of uh, coefficients. Yes, but uh, you just said that maybe you can do the same for Harris flow. Yeah. No, 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 no. I said that I can do their stronger results. So f can be discontinuous. F can be distribution function. Uh, but I for see. the same smooth flows, I do not know how to do such stuff for okay. Harris flow. Uh, also, let me mention this is uh, just another approach, but there is a very nice Kuznetsov book about this uh, Euler, Euler Maruyama uh, approximation. It is uh, like uh, uh, 800 page. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, and uh, uh, there is another approach. Actually, it is uh, connected to this uh, in changed research formula. Uh, when you uh, consider the expansion of the difference into uh, multiple stochastic integrals, and Maybe. then uh, and then do some estimation. I mean, um, like, uh, Kusok, there is schemes like Kusoka type. Uh, uh, yes, this is just uh, the first step, but uh, it can be uh, expanded for the. Uh, arbitrary number of multiple stochastic integrals. And yes. uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, it is more, uh, the conclusions can be the same. Uh, because uh, if you use chance treatment representation, you already have this uh, Stratonovich, uh, Stratono but multiple stochastic integrals. And uh, uh, maybe it, it, it's good uh, to have a look uh, at this book uh, uh, just from the point of view of different approach. Maybe you can do uh, something uh, in value. It's very interesting, but what I didn't understand, I know that uh, the standard, one possible approach to this weak error is you write this, let's say, the Stratonovich Taylor expansion. Exactly, exactly, yes. Uh, then you yeah. truncate. Yeah. You have iterated integrals, which are not easy to calculate. And then there is uh, people doing some alge algebraic stuff. Is, uh, yes, uh, be because it is uh, exactly, you mentioned this uh, idea that uh, this uh, commutators of uh, vector fields uh, must generate uh, the, uh, <coughs> RN algebra and so on. Uh, but uh, this is exactly the same. So uh, this is uh, just uh, different ways to to speak about uh, good properties of fundamental solution, for example. But sometimes you can uh, proceed with uh, with this expansion much more uh, faster and get some uh, some good conclusions. Uh, look at the. Realize that uh, we are functionals. Just consider it again the expansions uh, into multiple integrals of diffusion processes, uh, solution to stochastic differential equation. So, uh, and uh, he gets the estimation uh, and estimation for densities of uh, uh, the quantum solution. That's very interesting. I need to look into this paper. Uh, 
Ya, yeah, uh, so have a look on uh, Kuznetsov book and uh, Watanabe, uh, Shinzo Watanabe. I think it is uh, near uh, 2000 or 2010. I, I can miss, uh, but uh, uh, it definitely contains uh, generalized Wiener uh, functional, so, so you, you will find. The, the only problem is that the initial idea was to consider Harris flow as goal essence, or at least flows that have uh, some irregular or degenerate. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I, I, and I think uh, that uh, still Everything there fails. is uh, one unclear question here. Uh, uh, maybe uh, you know the answer that uh, can we just get the highest flow using the approximation by, by the smooth? Yes, you can. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, then uh, why not to use uh, some good estimation and to, go to the limit and try to get the go limit. to the limit. I, I think I did. I tried something like that and failed spectacularly. But, but... you see, uh, today you demonstrated interesting idea in the splitting scheme for uh, just plus epsilon w. Plus epsilon w. Uh, maybe. If you add something uh, much more noisy, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, epsilon multiply on uh, smooth noise for all particles, you can get uh, the flow which uh, oh. also approximate, but you can control this flow. Just uh, it is interesting. Well, theoretically, you could use splitting to get something very interesting. Yes. In uh, terms of flows and yeah. Okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, if there are no uh, other questions or comments, thank you again for the interesting talk. You're and uh, uh, I, uh, I have to say that uh, today we finish our uh, schedule for the semester. Uh, so, uh, uh, first of all, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And also, uh, I uh, want to recall that uh, after immediately after New Year uh, came, so we uh, collect uh, the uh, titles and abstracts for the new semester. So please send it uh, to Georgi Ryabov uh, uh, and uh, we will organize schedule for the other next semester. Thanks everybody and see you at the next year. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Bye, bye. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. See you. Bye.